you can look for weeks and weeks and then you know one day it happens yeah so, Ooh, so pretty this worked out really well just so happens that the diameter of this no way <gasps> exactly like a there. glove yeah. this is a loaded episode we finally gather all the pieces for the prop assembly Yep, perfect uh, fit. And Garrett got the port mizzen channel on yesterday. And we built the channels for the chain plates and rig. <laughs> then shape the stem. <laughs> and we tactfully move the masts on to the boat. So, Garrett and I have decided we want to try and start moving aboard. And I get to paint the interior in order to make Red Aviva habitable. What a life. Boat life. We've been collecting the parts for the prop assembly since we arrived in the boatyard. I first mentioned when we found our shaft, stern housing, and stuffing box in episode 28. Uh, 50 bucks for the shaft. 50 bucks for the shaft, $15 for the stern bearing, and $15 for the stuffing box. Whole setup for 80 bucks, can't really beat that. The boatyard yeah. definitely hooked it up. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you, Napa Valley Boatyard. <laughs> so now that we have all the pieces, it's time to plug up the hole in the back of the boat and fully get the prop installed. It takes big bolts too, yeah. which is good. And it's totally in shape. Nothing is, you know, bent or wonky. No injuries. <laughs> We're <opening> party. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Most parts we can find used, but we did buy new bolts and a new cutlass bearing. Oh, and you've got the cutlass, new cutlass bearing in there yep. now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's so pretty. This worked out really well. Um, so, just so happens that the diameter of this. No way. <gasps> exactly. Like in a there. glove. Yeah. It even had that like uh, tin can telephones. <laughs> it is, I feel like I'm in a play yard. Okay, I'm pulling it now. Okay. You know when you think you're centered. Alright, I think I'm about there. Decide if I want to mount it like this, which means that lag will definitely be going kind of like right on one of the little seams of the laminates. Uh -huh. Or if I just want to mount it diagonally like that. Oh, that's an idea. I'll probably end up doing that. I mean, I could even do it like that. Mm -hmm.
the stuffing box, correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. And where those like the, the pieces at the packing, end, the that's packing. that's where the packing goes yeah. in. So you unscrew this. This basically works like how we did the double nut okay. on this. Mm -hmm. um, so this is basically just a lock for this and this big cap unscrews and that's where you shove the rings of packing. And then um, when you screw this down, the packing is packed in this piece. And when you screw this down, um, this tube right here, um, when you screw it tight enough, it pushes up inside this piece and it pushes up on the packing. And the harder you tighten this, the more it makes the packing bulge as it gets okay. compressed and it compresses the packing um, against the shaft and that's what gives you a watertight seal because you squeeze this down and it bulges that packing and it cinches down around the prop shaft and then once you get it where you want you tighten this up against it and then that locks it in place and doesn't oh, let it twist at all. Alright so next step is to dry fit the prop shaft. With an up to par dry fit, it was time to bed everything into place. Now that everything was bedded, Garrett then took apart the stuffing box. So I guess one thing you may have noticed it didn't look like there was very much thread at all uh, when I got all that packing in, um, but it was, just remember it was in there loose, so as you tighten it down it compresses it in, um, but also when you first put it on you don't want to make it too tight, um, so just kind of snug it up by hand and then when you launch the boat you'll readjust it when she's in the water and then readjust it again with the engine running. All right, done. We've plugged up the very large hole in the back of the boat. But what about that thing that makes the boat do? So we got this prop. Um, so it's, it's everything about it is exactly what we needed. Um, the pitch and the diameter, the rotation. Um, the only thing is the prop was made for it's got an inch and a half bore, our shaft is inch and a quarter, so it doesn't fit on there. Uh, but we got the prop for free from our really awesome friend, um, Ron, and, uh, but you can just get these adapters. It's much better if the prop's a little big than if it's too small. Um, so we got one of these bronze adapters, so hopefully that'll just take up the gap. Yep, perfect oh, fit. Look at that. But I think this key is, key is going to be too big. We'll Besides installing the engine, there is one thing left to do. So what you doing? <laughs> um, just 
taking some meat off of the back end of this peel, um, which I've been meaning to do since I built the keel, but just finally getting around to it now, just like sh shaping the stem. Finally did that only just about a week ago, but there's really. But no you know, the really good part is that now you have the better tool for it. Yeah, now where you a didn't have it I before. That long yes, because this thing is a game changer. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So I think every man needs one. Oh yeah, um, but uh, yeah, finally getting around to those things since we're hoping to launch soon. Um, so yeah, I just want to take some meat off of the backside of the keel. For where the propeller is so it'll have you know cleaner water and the propeller will work better so for speed yes yes for speed <laughs> <laughs> This is a slick, and since the wind won't let Garrett speak, I'll repeat what he said. This one was made in the 40s. And our previous boat neighbor here, and now a very good friend, had this for 40 years. He gave it to me before he launched his boat. It's quite an honor. It's amazing the sentiment that gets tied into ordinary things. This wasn't a tool he wanted to sell. This was a part of his life, working around wooden sailboats. He wanted to pass it on. It wasn't easy. It was emotional to hand over a piece of himself. He couldn't swing it anymore, but once meeting Garrett, he said he knew who'd really appreciate it and use his old friend. We're honored to carry on that history. I think Garrett's been here. <clears throat> We're working on installing um, installing the channels. That'll uh, hold our chain plates out since we're going to have really tall bulwarks, taller than this. Because um, we're going to redo those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, gaff rig mast, which is shorter, um, and just a couple sets of simple stays without spreaders. You get quite a bit of angle in the shrouds. So um, if you have high bulwarks and your chain plates were to come like right here, you know, your shrouds could push on your bulwarks um, unless your bulwarks are you know structural and you actually run your chain plates up your bulwarks but I like uh, channels because they also bring your rigging further out so they give you more space uh, when you're walking on the side deck where it's like you might be clipping your shoulders on shrouds or something but if you bring them out um, you know it just gives you more space so yeah that's nice we're doing our uh, channels out of three layers um, and uh, this is two by stock find out where the chain plates go and then we take this and just screw it right in and bend it in place as we screw it in once we get it dry fit we pull it back off smear a bunch of tar and then trip, screw it back in and it's holes that we already so, did but it's a pretty easy process um, basically just cleaning this up a little bit because it's kind of dirty. So we're doing three layers and Garrett got that one done the other day. So that's the port mizzen channel. Should be a lot easier with another set of hands. Yeah, so the, this one's a little bit longer since it's for the main. Yeah, so it should bend in a little bit easier too. 
And then are you going to round it or around once they're done and dry? Yeah, once they're all set up, we're just putting them on with hard edges. So we'll get them all in place, and then once all three layers are in, I'll come back with uh, a grinder and, you know, grind the ends nice and round and smooth and make them all pretty. And then we're basically just going to lather them up thick in, uh, like, linseed oil and pine tar. Um, just like the masts and the bowl works and yeah. the rubber rail will have. Because there's not too much point, like... You know, it's really pretty wood that we're using for these, but it's, you know, in my opinion, there's not too much um, purpose or point to spend a lot of time varnishing them and making them look really pretty because they are the thing that sticks the furthest out off the hull. So if you hit anything or rub against anything, rub against pilings or whatnot, you're just gonna scratch these up. You're gonna scratch your pretty varnish work up. So it makes more sense just to oil them. Yeah. <laughs> So cool. Let's get yeah, started. Let's do it. All right. So we get to do that three more times, and then another three times as we move on to the starboard side. Hurry up, baby, because we're going somewhere tonight. One glass of wine in your mind, and you know I just mind. You know I just mind. You know I just mind. Well, the room goes boom to the sound of temptations and more. Twisting and turning the girls looking good on the floor. Sometimes. Sometimes you do it a couple extra times because, well, sometimes you just up and you turn it over and try again. Now friends, I'm not meaning to confuse you, but this episode is all the other little stuff we were doing between March and July while working on the cabin modification and the rudder that consumed the previous four episodes. The next ongoing side project is the chain plates. 
which Garrett's making the patterns for so we can take them to a machine shop and have them bend them. What's left on the chain plate patterns? Um, so I just gotta make the offset pair for these. Got them all done. I just need to do the port side for the main mast. While we're on the subject of our rig, let's check in on how our masts are doing. See, she's almost already dry here at this end. She's just soaking it up. I think I filled up like two of these to do the whole mast and uh, almost ready for more. So try and make this more of a regular occurrence than uh, once in like six months. It's pretty bad. We've been paying an extra $75 to keep the mast at the opposite end of the yard. And it isn't doing us any favors. As the masts have been sort of out of sight, out of mind, we needed to move them closer to home in order to take better care of them and to save a little dough. Few helping hands. <laughs> Thank you. 
Got it. Look at that. <laughs> How you keep a crew member happy. <laughs> Last up was our mizzen. You might have noticed a third log on the way over but that one's getting cut up into gaffs and booms later. Not bad. Now we see the masts every day, and we'll try and oil them often. But the next steps on the masts won't happen until after we're in the water. We'll cut up the spare spar and start figuring out the mast step. But we have other more important projects that have to get done to get us to the water sooner. Like... Yeah, so Garrett and I have decided we want to try and start moving aboard. So the main thing inside is all this green preservative just reeks. It's pretty bad. So Garrett's working up on deck. He's uh, wood plugging up the, um, the rub rail, finally. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a get around to things we've been putting off kind of day. We're hoping maybe to move aboard like in July sometime. That'd be really cool. So our main things that we want are makeshift bed. So we've got all this extra plywood that's for the interior. Um, so we're probably just gonna lay on top of the plywood. We've got a nice little mattress kind of pad thing to roll out on it. And then we need a place to eat so we're gonna do just kind of a little countertop here with our sort of camping stove put in and we've got a faucet outside for dishes and for water and the marina has bathrooms so we don't have to worry about that and um, yeah it's kind of it you know at least to get it there and I think we both just feel like we want to wake up here at the boat and I don't know that just feels normal <laughs> normal to us um, even if it's not exactly perfect right now. So, let's get to painting. Kinda, kinda get into a groove painting, so I'm happy it feels like getting to prep our Oh, <laughs> ah. So hot today. I paid our liveaboard fee. Uh, so we are official liveaboards. So Garrett kind of mocked up just a temporary interior. This is not how it's going to remain. But we wanted to be closer to the project, on the boat, stay focused, and I mean this is home. This is this is where we want to be. So I'm I'm excited. Uh, he kind of did this all in a day. We got our countertop. So we'll have our just camping stove here for now, place to chop whatever counter space, sink, and then a lot like how we had it up in Washington. This is actually the same sink. We had it stored uh, back behind the engine for the entire time. 
it's got a little bit of tar on there uh, like I do and so here we're just gonna have like a little platform with a water jug gravity feed so we can do some dishes in here and instead of figuring out plumbing and everything we're just gonna put a bucket I got our bed mattress in here and I put up these lights and then this is the table I've kind of been stashing stuff on it but it's basically just like a picnic table and it's got one seat there, other seat there. Yeah, so we'll have a place to eat some food together. But yeah, we've got some friends who heard that we've slowly been trying to make that transition into moving on the boat. And so last night we showed up at their boat. They're at the other end of the yard. We showed up at their boat with a couple beers. And we're like, hey, done with the work day? And uh, got to talking and they were like, so you're moving in tomorrow? And we are like, uh... And then they are like, we should make tacos <laughs> and celebrate. And we are like, alright, I guess we're moving in tomorrow. surrounded by other people working on their boat and you know everybody just wants to get back to the water so we're all you know in this together motivating each other it's that time up next I worked on the video all day yesterday and so Garrett was here at the boat alone cutting more holes into the deck <laughs> so he's redoing the bulwarks up on deck you can see one of the holes here. It's working on the bulwark posts. I think he's gonna be cutting our replacement posts, which will be made out of black locust, and instead of a bolt, they will go through the deck completely. Garrett says this is the last of the redo projects. The dream includes ship's bulwarks. This is really hard to drill through. Yeah. Thank goodness we've got Garrett's dad here to show us how to really work. 